Hi, Pastor Jerry here from Crossroads Church of Cleburne. It's that time of day again for our daily scripture reading. Today's reading comes from Acts chapter 16, and I invite you to either pull out your Bible and follow along, or look at the screen and follow along as I read, or simply sit back and listen as I read Acts chapter 16. Paul came to Derby and then to Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was Jewish and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. The believers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him, but Paul wanted to take him along on the journey, so he circumcised him because of the Jews who lived in that area, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. So the churches were strengthened and the faith strengthened in faith and grew daily in numbers. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that Paul had called us to preach the gospel there. Excuse me, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. From Troas we put out to sea and sailed straight to Samothrace, and the next day we went to Neapolis. From there we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony in the leading city in that district of Macedonia, and we stayed there for several days. On the Sabbath we went outside the city gate to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira, named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me to me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. Once we, when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God, who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Paul finally became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the Spirit left her. When her owners realized that, her hope of make, that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews who are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer who was commanded to guard them carefully when he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison was sh were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew a sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for the lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your whole household. And then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had, be he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. When it was daylight, the magistrates sent their officers to the jailer with the order, 
Release those men. The jailer told Paul, the magistrates have ordered that you and Silas be released. Now you can leave. Go in peace. But Paul said to the officers, They beat us publicly without a trial, even though we are Roman citizens, and threw us into prison. And now they want to get rid of us so quietly? No, let them come themselves and escort us out. The officers reported this to the magistrate, and when they heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, they were alarmed. They came to appease them and escorted them from the prison, requesting them to leave the city. After Paul and Silas came out of prison, they went to Lydia's house, where they met with the brothers and sisters and encouraged them. Then they left. That's Acts chapter 16. It's an exciting chapter with a lot going on. You see that uh, Paul and Silas were thrown in prison, but the jailer ended up actually being saved as a result of Paul and Silas being in prison. So God can work anywhere. They were in the middle of the night. It says about midnight. They were praying and singing hymns to God. They were being a witness of God and a witness of Jesus Christ. The, the foundations of the prison itself shook. All the doors opened, but nobody ran away. Nobody escaped. And uh, the jailer, who was about to kill himself, instead found eternal life in Jesus Christ. What an amazing, amazing chapter. And we see that the Holy Spirit is continuing to guide Paul and Silas. And um, Luke is with him. Here he says, we. And they're, they're continuing to be guided to where God wants them to be. As a result, the, the message goes all throughout Asia, goes throughout the known world at that time. And Paul's just being faithful. Paul and Silas are just being faithful to what God has for them. So I pray that encourages you, that you can be faithful today. Listen to what God says for you to do in your life and then do it. It's much easier. It's much better. It may be, uh, he may put you in situations where you feel it's beyond your control, but it's never beyond his control. So with all the uncertainty that's going on in the world, it would be much better for you to just put your faith and put your reliance in the one who created the world. I pray that this encourages you, that you have a joyful and blessed day. May God bless you. I love you. And I pray that you will be blessed and joyful and get good rest until we speak again.